My name is Leslie Nardone, and I am with the Training and Development Department. I'd like to welcome you to Professional Development Day. Before we get started today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about today's structure. And also, if you could put your name and your email address, your location in the chat, it would be helpful. Today's going to be divided into six separate segments. The first one is mindfulness moments, because we can all stand a little bit more mindfulness. Segment two is Sound Sensible, which is geared for the kindergarten instructional associates. It runs all day long from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Segment three has two sessions in it, and segment four through six has three sessions each, one hour long. At the end of the day, there'll be an evaluation which doubles as your attendance, so if you would please fill that out, we'd appreciate it. So we hope you enjoy your day and let's get started with Mindfulness Moments with Wanda Jones. Good morning, so great to be with you all again. I hope that um, the day is um, less stressful than normal for you, whether you're in the building or you are working from home today. Um, and if, I, if you were with us the last time, I did do a mindful moment with uh, you guys. So I'll be doing that again, but we're gonna spend a little bit more time together today talking about um, just how we become more self-aware um, about our own trauma and also how do we cope and what are the stress responses and then how do we take care of ourselves and make sure that we are well. Um, so this is a, a subject that I love talking about. It's personal, near and dear to me. I um, practice it regularly uh, because of my own uh, experiences and want to share with you guys um, all of the things that I've learned over the years. I've been talking about self-care since before I even started working in Columbus City Schools, and I think it's even more critical now than ever before. Um, so we shall get started. So this is about all of you and the adults that support uh, all of our families and our students. Um, in other sessions that you'll have um, throughout the rest of the school year, you know, we'll get into more things about how to help our students. But right now, this is about you uh, and how we can make sure that we are filling our own buckets in stressful times. Again, my name is Wanda Jones. I'm a social emotional learning specialist here in Columbus City Schools. Uh, and I'm happy to be with you. Um, so there are two things um, that I wanna talk about before we get into our mindful moment. One of them is our breath. And it is, as you'll see here in this quote, um, is indispensable to our health and healing. And I truly, truly believe that. I practice different types of breath work with our students regularly and I practice them on my own. But I wanted to share with you something that uh, I've discovered in, in a book that I'm currently reading about the word breath and what it means in different languages and different cultures. And so in Hebrew, the word breath actually means the spirit of God. Uh, in Sanskrit, it means the universal life force. In Greek, it means the soul or spirit. And in Tibetan Buddhism, it means the vehicle of the mind. So our breath is one of the most important things that we can use that's at our disposal that we have every day to help us with our health and healing. And so I'm going to teach you one of my favorite um, breath works, which is just belly breathing. If you've ever been a singer or if you've, um, you like to sing or if you've been in martial arts or just, you know, most athletes practice this type of breathing. I learned it 20 something years ago uh, when I first attempted to do yoga and didn't realize that my breathing was shallow and more rapid and it was not conducive to having a healthy lifestyle. So I try to frequently practice this type of breathing. So I'm gonna practice it with you. And then as we go into our mindful moment, I want us to use our belly breathing um, as I kind of lead us through that as well. Um, so at this time, I would invite you to uh, turn off your screens for a moment if you'd like. Um, and just go ahead and get ready to prepare to even gaze down or maybe even close your eyes so you can limit any distractions that you might have. So 
So today's uh, mindful moment is really just about bringing an awareness to ourselves. And so let's begin by sitting in our seats and kind of finding that comfortable spot where you can feel relaxed. Um, and as I said, you can arrows to see if at this time you can go ahead and close your eyes if you like, or gaze down. And um, I'm gonna practice with you some uh, belly breathing. And so um, if you can hopefully see me, I wanna show you what that looks like. So I invite you to put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly so you can actually feel your body as we do this so that it becomes kind of um, uh, natural for you as you do it later on. So the, the key is, is that you wanna take a deep breath in through your nose, starting with filling up your belly first, and then moving into your lungs. And as you do that, you'll feel your body kind of rise, your shoulders kind of rise up and your belly expand. Then as you exhale, you wanna exhale through your nose again, not your mouth, but through your nose and allow that air to fully empty out, starting with your lungs down into your belly. We're gonna do this three times together um, and do it at your own pace, okay? So here we go, breathe in and breathe out. Again, just making sure that you are inhaling to the full capacity and then also exhaling out as much air as possible. Breathe in and breathe out. One more time, breathe in and breathe out. All right, so let's start by checking in with what we feel in our bodies. Notice if there's any tension anywhere. And if there is, I invite you to place a hand there gently. Send some love and kindness to this place in the body. And take a deep belly breath in and let it go. Perhaps there is a place in the body that feels content or at ease. You can place a hand there gently as well, sending some love and kindness to this place in the body. Take a deep belly breath in and let it go. I invite you to place a hand over your heart so that you can connect to your breath and feeling your heart rise and fall. Notice how this feels. Now send some love and kindness for everything your heart does to sustain you. Now I invite you to cradle one of your hands in with the other. You might offer yourself a gentle squeeze of the hand or maybe even massage that palm a little bit and notice how that feels. And let's switch hands, let's do that uh, on the other side giving that a gentle squeeze or hand massage in the palm. Notice this feeling and then send love and kindness to your hands for the strength and the gentleness that your hands provide to you every day. Next, I invite you to hold opposite elbows with your hands. And perhaps you wanna squeeze, kind of give yourself a hug if that feels good for you and notice what that's like, sending love and kindness to your whole self for just showing up today. Lastly, I invite you to allow the hands to land wherever you felt the most nurturing to you. Maybe it was in the heart space, or maybe it was in the palms, maybe it was in that self hug, or simply just allow your palms to rest down by your side or maybe facing down on your legs and just notice what feels best to you. Let's take three more deep belly breaths here at your own pace. On your last exhale, go ahead and gently open your eyes or lift up your gaze. 
I thank you for practicing with me today. I hope that you feel a little more present in the moment um, and ready for the day. So to the cartoon that I have here on the right, I really like this one um, because we have all have this inner voice that is constantly talking to us about what already happened or what might happen. And it just keeps going and going. Mindfulness helps us to kind of clear that space, right? And if any of you are um, have fur animals or babies like I do and you love animals, that's how they go through life, right? Is just being present in the moment. And that's why they can always connect with us. Uh, but we have to learn to slow down our thoughts uh, as well so that we can uh, be present in the moment. So today, what we will be learning is you're going to learn about trauma and the effects that it has. Some of you I know have been through a lot of trauma uh, training in the past, and we've even talked about it in the last session. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because there will be additional sessions later on for you to learn even more. Um, but I want to talk about trauma and how it affects you. And then we're also going to be able to identify our own stress responses and how those affect us. Uh, we're going to learn about the importance of self-care and what areas you could possibly improve upon. And lastly, uh, I'm going to share a bunch of uh, self-care strategies and tips and resources to help reduce your stress. So again, number one, trauma and the effects. Um, I am going to just simply help you become more self-aware about what trauma you may have experienced in your life and how it affects you, because that is the key to me uh, of being able to take care of ourselves uh, and make sure that we are uh, in tune with what we've been through and how we can impact that in a more positive way. So somebody shared this with me just a couple of days ago, this meme um, that I just was like, oh, I can't wait to use this. Uh, you know, the saying that what doesn't kill you can make you stronger. Um, but the reality is, is that those things that we go through that almost take us out really dysregulate our nervous system. And that trauma can get trapped in our body and cause disease and sickness and all kinds of issues. And so um, it can also steal our sense of self. And sometimes it may make you wish that it did kill you, right? Because it can be so difficult to go through. So I just want to make sure that we stop glorifying trauma as if, oh, you know, it's turned me into the person I am today. Well, that might be true, but we have to deal with our trauma and we have to be honest with ourselves about how it affects us and how we interact with others uh, and just the impact that it has on our lives. So I don't know if any of you have heard of the ACES um, questionnaire or study that was done uh, many years ago. Uh, it's about adverse childhood experiences. And I'm gonna provide you guys with a link to that questionnaire that you can do on your own time uh, at the end of this session. But uh, this questionnaire for me was so enlightening because I went through a lot of trauma as a child and I knew I had, you know, I'd been working on myself for a long period of time, but it wasn't until I did this questionnaire that I was really able to uh, say, wow, I don't know, you know, how I actually came out of the situation that I came out of, uh, because there are 10 questions on this questionnaire, and they're around the, the things you see here at the top, around your mother's depression, uh, if you experience emotional sexual abuse, substance abuse, domestic violence, homelessness, incarceration of a family member, uh, mental illness in your family, maybe you've been through, uh, parents have divorced. So these are all questions um, about what may have happened to you prior to the age of 18. And when I did this questionnaire, out of the 10 questions, I scored yes on nine of them. And that was a lot you know, to kind of process through, uh, but it helped me in so many ways of understanding why I needed to work on the things I needed to work on and how I can um, just be more aware of my triggers and those things that I need to continue working on. It's a lifelong process, right? And so if you decide that you wanna take this questionnaire, I just wanna warn you that it can be triggering. Um, so please make sure that you are in a space, a mental space, um, or you have some support to process through any of that. Um, because again, if you have things that you're still working on, uh, it, it, it could, you know, trigger you. And so I just want to make sure I warn you about that. Um, and so what are some of the adverse effects of the, of the trauma that we experience as children? There's so many things that happen to us biologically, 
uh, and cognitively. And so um, at the bottom of this, you'll see some of the things that we might see in our environments, in our communities, as a result of all of these different uh, traumatic uh, childhood experiences. Um, but specifically when it comes to our own health and well-being, um, the, the, the higher number of ACEs that a, a child has been through increases their risk for drug and alcohol abuse, uh, abortions, um, just cognitive development, and all kinds of health issues like anxiety and depression. And so those risk factors continue to rise with the more ACEs that uh, you have experienced. Uh, not all hope is lost though, because you can overcome so much of this and it's really about resiliency and having good positive relationships with adults as you kind of uh, go through your childhood that help us overcome these things. And so I think it's important for us to recognize in ourselves some of the things that we may have been through. And even if you haven't been through some of these things, um, in the last couple of years, we've all been through a traumatic, stressful situation. So we can share that with each other. And what we call that is collective trauma. All right, so events such as the pandemic um, have led to so many long-term psychological effects. We have seen in our students and our staff um, an increase in anxiety and stress and depression. And even before COVID, um, there were high rates in our, in our students and children's hospital can't even keep up with it. Um, and so since COVID, we've seen even a, a bigger increase in that. Some other um, events that can cause collective trauma would be a war, natural disasters, mass shootings. Uh, and these are things that are happening, you know, on the regular in our society and in our country and the world, uh, genocides. Um, in the uh, paper that I read this, uh, got this information from, it did not include racism, but I did want to include that here and call that out because unfortunately, kind of in the mainstream conversation about trauma, racism is not talked about enough, in my opinion. Um, and that certainly can have uh, lasting impacts on large groups of people. So I just wanted to call that out. So anyways, what happens, right? It can lead to a heightened vigilance, increase in fear, uh, and just challenges to our own individual and collective identity. So you might be able to resonate with some of that as we've gone through this uh, collective trauma together. Some may have experienced more stress than others um, because of conditions that they already were experiencing prior to the pandemic but we can all connect on this one thing, even if you haven't experienced some of the other traumatic uh, ACEs experiences. Um, so to me, the silver lining is that in this is that it has brought to the forefront how important it is, right, for us to take care of ourselves and to take care of each other. All right, secondly, well, when we go through trauma or stress, we all have a way that we respond to that. Uh, good or bad or indifferent, but it's great to be aware of what type of stress response that we have. Again, being self-aware about that is uh, makes it easier for us to take care of ourselves. So we're going to explore uh, a little bit of that here next. All right, so there are three major ones, which is fight, flight, or freeze. You've probably heard of those before. This has a fourth one um, that I thought was really important when we talk about our adults. And I'll give you a moment just to kind of reflect and look at those. And if you are willing to be uh, transparent and, and share, uh, by all means, you can share in the chat, which one is the one that you identify with primarily? Maybe there's ones that are kind of secondary for you, um, but we all have one of these, if not more, that uh, is how we respond when we are dealing with stressful situations. For me, as a child, mine was fight. You might understand and see when I talk to our kids about their own stress responses, majority of them say that their stress responses fight as well. Um, so that makes total sense. And we see so much of that in our schools. Um, but as adults, we also have a stress response. And so we have to be aware of what that is so then we can overcome that and work through that. I've been working all my life on trying to find more healthy ways um, when I am in stressful situations. But one of the things that I've learned the most is that I need to reduce the amount of stressful situations that I'm in so that I don't have to respond by one of these ways. So I'm going to just uh, open up the chat here and, and see what all we're saying, kind of get some feedback, a lot of fight, um, fight, freeze. Can I, I sure add one, um, 
And I add one, I, I think um, we have to fight, flight, or freeze, but I use prayer. That is a, um, a way to help me deal with the situations and the stressful things. I think we spend um, a lot of time looking at the um, outside instead of looking at the inside. And, you know, prayer gives you an opportunity to, uh, you know, share with others and, and, and make it more of a community um, help um, deal as opposed to trying to deal with it by yourself. Through prayer, you can involve others to, you know, to help um, um, get through traumatic experiences as well. But I think um, we, 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 we underemphasize that a lot, I think. I'd like to yes. chime in on that, please. I yes. agree with I agree with you on the prayer, but before you can pray, you got to acknowledge what you're responding to, but most importantly, why? Because you can pray all you want, but if you are not addressing what is going on with you, prayer can't help you. That's my opinion. Okay. Oh well, yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not talking about prayer as in you know, just um, spouting off words, but specifically dealing with what the issue is. And um, when there's group prayer, you can oh. share with the other person what's going on. And then together, you you guys pray and bring the trauma to the forefront and be support for the individual who's going through the trauma. And uh, I'm not talking about just, just spitting words in the air. I'm talking about a focused approach to prayer. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying that. What I'm gathering from this session right now, it is teaching us how to, one, know that we have a trauma, but identify what that trauma is. And I wholeheartedly agree with you with, in terms of prayer, but we first must know that, one, we've been traumatized. Two, what that trauma is. Three, how do we respond to that trauma? Then we can pray about it. Totally agree. Totally agree. But um, if there's not a trauma, then, um, you know, there's really not um, the prayer. So you have to know what you're praying for in order to um, to do it. So you have to name the trauma in order and, to pray for it. Right. And that's the sole purpose of what I'm gathering. That's the sole purpose of this slide on this screen. It says trauma, stress, re responses. Right. How do we respond? Right. And I yeah, just added mine, point, mine with prayer. Yeah, mine with so, prayer. So the, the prayer is, okay. is a, a way that we cope with our trauma, okay? And it's a way that we deal with it. Um, so right now we're just talking about what is our instinct? What When we are in a stressful situation, we don't always go right to prayer or whatever our self-care strategy is. We have a something that happens on the inside of us. So those are the things that I'm trying to help us identify right now. And we'll get to the next phase of that, which is, okay, now that we're experiencing uh, a loss of control, or maybe we're kind of just isolating ourselves, what do we need to do to get out of that situation and to have a healthier response to it? But thank you all, yes, for sharing. Um, again, this is just about being aware that when we are in stressful situations, what is our typical kind of response? And what is it that we, now we can say, all right, I know that my typical response might, might be to flee the situation. I can't always do that though. And we expect that of our kids. We expect them to stay in the classroom and, and when they actually want to leave and we have to help them as well with some of this. And so it's just about being aware. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanna share with you guys a video real quick about what happens when we have chronic stress. Uh, there is stress hormones uh, that are released in our body and the impact that those have. So we'll watch this quick video and then we'll uh, move forward. Please let me know if you can't hear it. Cramming for a test? trying to get more done than you have time to do. Stress is a feeling we all experience when we are challenged or overwhelmed. But more than just an emotion, stress is a hardwired physical response that travels throughout your entire body. In the short term, stress can be advantageous, but when activated too often or too long, 
Your primitive fight or flight stress response not only changes your brain, but also damages many of the other organs and cells throughout your body. Your adrenal gland releases the stress hormones cortisol, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. As these hormones travel through your bloodstream, they easily reach your blood vessels and heart. Adrenaline causes your heart to beat faster and raises your blood pressure, over time causing hypertension. Cortisol can also cause the endothelium, or inner lining, of blood vessels to not function normally. Scientists now know that this is an early step in triggering the process of atherosclerosis, or cholesterol plaque buildup in your arteries. Together, these changes increase your chances of a heart attack or stroke. When your brain senses stress, it activates your autonomic nervous system. Through this network of nerve connections, your big brain communicates stress to your enteric or intestinal nervous system. Besides causing butterflies in your stomach, this brain-gut connection can disturb the natural rhythmic contractions that move food through your gut, leading to irritable bowel syndrome, and can increase your gut sensitivity to acid, making you more likely to feel heartburn. Via the gut's nervous system, stress can also change the composition and function of your gut bacteria, which may affect your digestive and overall health. Speaking of digestion, does chronic stress affect your waistline? Well, yes. Cortisol can increase your appetite. It tells your body to replenish your energy stores with energy-dense foods and carbs, causing you to crave comfort foods. High levels of cortisol can also cause you to put on those extra calories as visceral or deep belly fat. This type of fat doesn't just make it harder to button your pants. It is an organ that actively releases hormones and immune system chemicals, called cytokines, that can increase your risk of developing chronic diseases, such as heart disease and insulin resistance. Meanwhile, stress hormones affect immune cells in a variety of ways. Initially, they help prepare to fight invaders and heal after injury, but chronic stress can dampen the function of some immune cells make you more susceptible to infections, and slow the rate you heal. Want to live a long life? You may have to curb your chronic stress. That's because it has even been associated with shortened telomeres, the shoelace tip ends of chromosomes that measure a cell's age. Telomeres cap chromosomes to allow DNA to get copied every time a cell divides without damaging the cell's genetic code, and they shorten with each cell division. When telomeres become too short, a cell can no longer divide, and it dies. As if all that weren't enough, chronic stress has even more ways it can sabotage your health, including acne, hair loss, sexual dysfunction, headaches, muscle tension, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, and irritability. So, what does all this mean for you? Your life will always be filled with stressful situations, but what matters to your brain and entire body is how you respond to that stress. If you can view those situations as challenges you can control and master, rather than as threats that are insurmountable, you will perform better in the short run and stay healthy in the long run. Okay, so again, back to the uh, cortisol um, and the impacts that it has on us. Some of those I just want to kind of mention again is that we have an increase of chronic anxiety. We see that uh, all the time, depression, as I mentioned before. Uh, and this isn't just our students, this is us, right? We've, we've gone through very um, stressful, long-term stressful situations and potentially could increase our risk for cardiovascular disease, even Alzheimer's, um, insomnia. How many of us you know, struggle with our sleep when we're stressed? Uh, autoimmune diseases like diabetes, et cetera, and digestion issues. And I, I personally, and just to be transparent with you, digestion issues, insomnia are probably two of my <laughs> biggest challenges that I still struggle with. So self-care is so important to me because I know now 
why I'm dealing with those issues, right? That's a result of extended chronic stress that I've experienced over my lifetime. And I have to work and make sure I'm taking care of myself so that I can live as long as possible. So those are just some of the uh, increased risk that we see. Um, but this all comes from trauma as well, right? So trauma, there's different types of it, but extended chronic stress coming from trauma can cause all of these different uh, risks in, in our health. So why is self-care important? That's what we're gonna talk about next, right? So we all, again, I think can understand and relate to each other and have empathy uh, because we are all experiencing a, a heightened level of that these days. So now I wanna share with you just kind of what I personally do. Um, some of the things that I do to take care of myself um, so that I can show you there's so many different ways that we can do this. You have to find what works for you. But in the top left-hand corner, that is my daughter and my cat that I love spending time with. Family and friends, you know, is one of the best ways to take care of yourself. Uh, in the middle top, I uh, last year was in a, a really bad car accident, broke my collarbone in four places and uh, was experiencing some extended pain. And, and somebody recommended that I go get acupuncture. And let me tell you, that stuff works, okay? If you're scared of it, I understand. It really hurts just maybe a little bit. Uh, but our insurance, I found a place that our insurance covers that. Uh, of course, there's a copay. So if you're interested in trying that, I also have plantar fasciitis in my right foot. And the acupuncture helps with that tremendously. So I highly encourage people who are out, uh, who are willing to be open-minded and trying acupuncture that has been very helpful for my own health. Uh, the top right corner is a current one of the current books that I'm reading. Reading, you know, can be very helpful for our, our self care. Uh, but I love uh, I love yoga and learning about uh, trauma sensitive yoga. Is something that I'm very interested in right now. Uh, the bottom right hand corner is uh, a trip I took with some friends a year and a half ago to Hawaii, and we did some horseback riding. I love horseback riding just in general. I find it very therapeutic. I was just talking with somebody the other day, but I need to find somebody here locally where I can go and ride um, because I tend to do it just whenever I'm on vacation or whatever, but that's something that really helps me. <clears throat> In the middle is um, a goat yoga session that I got to do actually a week right before my accident. Um, so that was really fun. Uh, it's at a farm uh, just on the south end here of Columbus, which was really cool. Uh, and then lastly, the bottom corner picture is of an upcoming trip that I have. It's a yoga retreat that I'm going on. <clears throat> and yes, it's you know a big sacrifice financially for me, but my well-being is just that important that I take the time and invest in myself. So there are just so many other ways that we can take care of ourselves and, and we have to really invest in that. So I just wanted to share a little bit with you about some of the things that I do. Okay, so now it's your turn to share with me. <clears throat> Two different questions I have here. Uh, why is self-care important to you? Um, and then secondly, what are some of the types of self-care that you already practice regularly if you do? Please uh, feel free to unmute or share in the chat with me. Well, I would like, I um, exercise every morning. I get up at 4.45 and I do my um, devotion. And then I ride my exercise bike. I'm up to, uh, like you, I had a, a medical incident. And so it forced me to um, change the way I eat, change the way I, you know, um, do business. And so I, I've begun to, you know, um, read my Bible in the morning. And then I ride my bike and I do some stretching. And that prepares me for the day. Thank you so much for sharing. That's awesome that you're able to stick to that every day, right? That's the challenge. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> um, I uh, wanted to piggyback off of Mr. M, um, Pastor Coach. Uh, Mr. M, I just wanted to tell you that you're doing a great job and a great deed to yourself due to the fact that there's a study shown that uh, exercising and doing vigorous activities uh, cuts down on Alzheimer's and dementia. So I think that that's a, a wonderful thing that you're doing. Um, I just started running back on my treadmill and I feel amazing every day. It just, it just does something for your body. You're giving your body, uh, you're helping your temple basically. And uh, we have to do that. People should do that daily to take care of their bodies, to, you know, keep themselves physically active and, 
even into your 80s and 90s. You got to phys stay physically active. Yep. Thanks. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I, I also see, you know, I, when I come in the building in the mornings and I'm, you know, I'm saying my good mornings to everybody and I'm, you know, walking through, uh, I see it's also, it helps others because the positive impact that it, it, it helps me coming to the building with, you know, affects those around me. And I see, a, you know, a lot more children smiling and, and I do say that good morning to all of them. And I mean, it, it's just that I've gotten myself into a place to where I want to reach out and help others get there as well. Thank you all for your sharing in the chat. Um, I am going to put a link in the chat for you to kind of do a self-assessment. We may not spend um, the entire time that you would need to complete it, uh, but I'm going to give you a few moments to uh, kind of check it out. And you can complete this on your own. For those of you who are like, you know, I don't feel like maybe I'm doing enough. This is a great way for you to kind of self-assess, kind of breaks it down into different categories of different types of self-care. So you can identify where maybe there's some gaps or maybe some areas that you haven't thought of before that maybe you wanna try. So what you'll do is you'll click on the link and it should prompt you uh, to make a copy. And then once you make a copy for yourself, then it'll be a document that you can save in your own drive, Google Drive, and you can work on that, uh, like I said, uh, on your own time. I'll give folks a few minutes here uh, to kind of get that going. If you're having any challenges with that, um, please let me know. I'm on my phone. Is there any way you can send that to my school email? Because I'm yes, on the phone. Absolutely. I can't. absolutely. Here's what I'll ask for you to do. At the end, I'm going to provide you with my email. And if okay. you'll make note of that, contact me, and then I'll make sure you get it, okay? Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, so yeah, my plan is to um, turn this slideshow into like a PDF that I can then share out with you all as well. So you can go back and uh, access the resources that I have in here. Um, so I'll just need a few moments at the end of the presentation to, to get that downloaded for you and then share it with you. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move forward for the sake of time here. I wanna be mindful of that. So next, now I have lastly, um, some of my favorite strategies and resources that I wanted to share with you um, that I feel could be very, there's you know all ranges of different things you guys are already doing, but it's always nice to kind of get some other ideas. <clears throat> but before I do that, I wanna talk about, so we already talked about the, the stress hormone that causes all of these diseases and illnesses and issues in our body. There are also, all right, chemicals or hormones that do the opposite for us. That would be dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. So if you look at this kind of chart here and you, you kind of start with that first row of how deficiency affects you, and if you can identify one area that you feel, you know, maybe that you're lacking in, and then right below that, we'll give you some ideas on ways that you can increase those, um, those happy chemicals in your body uh, so that you can be more intentional uh, with um, your well-being. So I'll give you a moment to kind of just check that out. Uh, if you feel a lack of motivation or energy, that might mean you have you need more dopamine. Um, and there are just all these natural ways that we can do this. We don't have to always rely on medication. Uh, certainly those help uh, when, ne when needed and necessary. Uh, I don't want anybody to feel like if you're taking medication that, that that's a bad thing to do. I've actually had to do that myself at one point. Um, but there are also some very natural ways that we can that we can help ourselves. And so if um, maybe you're feeling anxious or you're struggling with insomnia, insomnia maybe you need more oxytocin. <clears throat> if you're struggling with feeling hopeless or low self-esteem, maybe you need more serotonin. Um, if you're dealing with, you know, aches and pains like I do regularly, um, or you're, you know, having some impulsive type behaviors, uh, maybe there's some endorphins, some, some things you can do to increase your endorphins. Some of my favorites are to get massages, but 
unfortunately that costs a lot of money so I can't do this as often as I would like um, but uh, that that's one of my favorites exercising uh, and, and acupuncture is on here and I know somebody back in the chat had asked for that information please I'm going to give you my email at the end please reach out and I'll be happy to share um, the contact information for that doctor uh, as well all right, so while we are at work, right, this is this time or the place we spend so much of our time. What are some things we can do um, at work or even at home? This is a, a, a little full, or a poster of 50 different ways that we can take a break. Um, taking a nap, right? <laughs> Can't do that at work. But certainly I know recently I've been taking a lot of naps due to the, the time change and it's really helped me kind of get through my evenings. Um, I use uh, different type of uh, essential oils sometimes. I like to um, you know, take time to, to show gratitude and keep note of things that I'm thankful for. Um, you know, th These are all kind of different things that we can do that help us uh, every day, just kind of to take that break that we need and um, take deep belly breaths, that's on here as well. Uh, prayer, all of the things that you guys already mentioned, but here's just some additional uh, things that we can do. So I encourage you, if you're not already, to be practicing one or more of the items to the left. And um, please, please leave your work at work to the best of your ability. And I know we can't, we actually have to take home some work sometimes. But what I mean by that is the challenges, the stressors, the situations that occur daily try to leave those things at work to the best of your ability and don't take those home with you. Uh, exercising regularly, right? And if that's a struggle, you know, get an accountability partner. Uh, that can be very helpful or, or go to some of our CCS wellness classes for free. They've got some, some great uh, classes that they offer. While you're at work, if you can take a walk, get outside, get some fresh air now that our weather is better. If you have just even 10 minutes to take, go for a walk, I highly encourage that as well. I know a lot of people don't take their lunch sometimes. Please, 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 I beg you, take your lunch. <laughs> that is your time, you need that break. I know again that that's not always possible, but to the best of your ability, please take your lunches. Hang with positive people and be a positive person for them as well. Um, there's podcasts, you know, of all sorts out there. And lastly, if you are really struggling, struggling with some, um, mental health challenges, you know, there are so many supports that Columbus City Schools provides, uh, and I'm going to direct you to that website later on uh, that are free resources if you use the insurance um, through Columbus City Schools. For those of us who work directly with students, I wanted to give you, uh, we don't want to forget about them, even though this is mostly about you, some things that you can do that ultimately, you know, help you throughout your day if you are helping your students. And one of the things I always encourage people to do is to be vulnerable with your students. Let them know if you're just having a tough day and then tell them, this is what I need right now in order for me to cope. Maybe I need to step outside for a minute. Maybe I need to go for a walk. Maybe I just, you know, whatever that is and model that for them because a lot of times our students don't get to see healthy ways of coping. And if we can be transparent with them and say, you know, this is a tough time for me. I'm just having a rough day, whatever it may be, uh, then they'll feel more connected to you. Um, always do, uh, you know, some check-ins with your kids, see how they're feeling, what kind of mood they're in. That'll help you better support them throughout the day. Um, practice belly and box breathing. We haven't reviewed box breathing, but you can always Google that if you want to learn about that. Uh, I had a teacher who told me recently he went through a study at OSU a few years ago because he was dealing with some high anxiety and he was very, uh, they hooked him up to these monitors that showed him as he practiced box breathing, how it really helped him to regulate. And he thought that was really cool. Um, if you have a classroom setting using dim and calm lighting and maybe even some music can help really kind of keep a calm atmosphere. Uh, and of course, letting students use fidgets um, or alternative seating for them to regulate. Because if our kids are calm, then it's easier for us to stay calm and vice versa. If we're calm, it's easier for them to be calm. So I just wanted to throw in some of those strategies for you. All right, and lastly, here are some resources. Um, again, these are links here on the left-hand side. So I'll send you the, the slideshow so you can access those. The first one is that ACES questionnaire that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, and then the second one is just our CCS wellness uh, page on the website. If you haven't checked that out, please do. 
Uh, the second one is just an article specifically for my ladies and um, some well-being, different well-being things for you to uh, pay attention to that are very important and specific to, um, to women. Brene Brown, I don't know if any of you know who she is. She is one of my favorite, favorite authors. She's a researcher and um, she has so many different resources. She is one of the main reasons why I became very uh, informed about trauma. And if that's something that a journey you want to kind of go down, I highly encourage you uh, to listen to her podcast uh, or even check out some of her books. She's got a ton of them. Um, and then in addition, I mentioned this earlier, CCS does have some mental health resources. There's, um, if I click on this, actually, I kind of wanted to show you what that looks like here. <clears throat> so you see what they have to offer. Headspace is free um, for educators, so you can get your own free subscription. This is an app um, that you can use uh, for yourself and with your students. Um, then there's also Talkspace, which is a virtual kind of therapy um, opportunity. I don't know why it's saying the document failed to load, but anyways, so that's a, a, something I started looking into recently just to explore a little bit. And then this Zenvelo, um, is an app as well. So those are all free resources because some of the stuff does cost, but I wanted to make sure I pointed that out to you. And also um, at that, here at South High School, we include the students, we, we take them for walks and things. You know, I, I found it's also helpful when we teach them how to, uh, how to cope and you know, and, and we go for walks and, and, you know, there's times in the room we have, you know, those talks. So we try to include them as much as we can. And so, you know, with this helpful, with, with the things you were talking about, the benefits of exercise, you know, having them go out and walk with us as well. It also uh, benefits us, you know, because we're getting healthy as we're helping them, you know, learn how to cope and how to deal with things as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's key, right? We, we've got to co-regulate uh, is what we call that is we make sure we're regulated so we can help our kids regulate. And if we're not healthy, then it's going to be very difficult to help and support our students. Um, so I have some links on here. If you're into yoga, there's a free, you know, YouTube has all kind of free yoga, right? But one of my favorites is yoga with Cassandra. She has um, videos for every level and every situation. Uh, so you could check her out. Um, but again, there's so many others out there. And then as an educator, Yoga Ed is a really good um, a channel, a YouTube channel that has things that you can do with students. And there's also some things for adults on there as well. Uh, Spotify, if you listen to Spotify, they actually have a playlist already created that has some guided meditations that are like two to 10 minutes long. So very short. Uh, the Calm app is another one that's very popular. You've probably heard about that. LeBron James is actually partnered with them and has some mindful moments that he does, uh, that, that he voices on the Calm app. Uh, and Mind Love is just another podcast that I uh, have listened to in the past. All right. So that is the end of my presentation. I thank you all again for uh, being here with me today. Uh, if you have questions or would like more info, here is my email. It's just jjones1. Uh, please make sure you include the one because there are some other jjoneses out there. Um, and I will send you whatever information that you need. Um, and I just appreciate you all for just being present with me today and sharing. Um, there's just so many resources out there, but I hope that this has been helpful to you, that you have some more ways to help you deal with your stress, because as the video said, we're all going to go through stressful situations in our lives. Uh, we, we need to be reminded, I believe, from time to time that it's OK to take time for ourselves um, and to focus on ourselves so we can be the best version of ourselves. <laughs>